Hello, Syngap land. My name is Michael Gralia. This is episode 99 of Syngap 10, your 10-minute weekly briefing on everything you need to know about Syngap 1. Today is Saturday, April 1st, and this week was exceptional, even by my, even though I say that every week. This week, crazy. Monday, Tuesday, interesting stuff, but I'm going to skip it. Wednesday. Let me tell you about Wednesday morning. I wake up on Wednesday morning. And we have a, a meeting with a with a university. And I'm like, you know, these people reach out. They say, let's have a meeting. We say, yes, we schedule it. I show up. I'm like, what are we talking about? And these guys are like, so we've been working on Syngap for two years. And we're working on gene therapy. And we're going to work on four genes. And it's Syngap and three other genes. And we want to, you know, we just wanted to connect with you because we're going to start doing some gene therapy development. And I'm like, that's amazing. And then they're like, um, we're also, by the way, we've applied to make a monkey. And we're, we're. Well, you know, we're going to find out in July if we're going to have money to make a monkey. And you know you're in too deep on this rare disease stuff when somebody tells you they want to inflict the disease that you hate on another species and you're like, that's amazing. You know, we all like monkeys. Monkeys are very cute. Whatever. Mike, why are you excited about giving Syngap to a monkey? Well, let me tell you. A monkey is very helpful if you're going to test the gene therapy, Right? If your gene therapy is very serious stuff, stick it to the body, goes in the brain, change viral vector, the whole nine yards, you really want to do that to another primate before you do it to a human, especially a human you're related to, right? So the idea that somebody's going to figure out how to give Syngap to a monkey, and then you got to study the monkey and see what a monkey with Syngap looks like, so you know what a Syngap, you know what a monkey who you fix Syngap in looks like, it's a big deal. So that was. Wednesday morning. I was like, whoa, that's great. And then I open my inbox and, and Stuart Cobb and has sent us an update. We've, as you know, if you've been paying attention, we gave Stuart Cobb a, a grant um, to work on some gene therapy um, in mice. And, and so we, you know, we're reading that and looking at his progress and we're like, that's cool. So we're Stuart Cobb's doing some gene therapy in mice over in Edinburgh, the next, right next to Peter Kine's lab, right? So it's Tuesday morning. It's not even 10 o'clock. I've talked to a university. I had no idea I was working on Syngap and they're making a monkey. Stuart Cobb's making progress. Do, 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 do my work, have my meetings. And then I walk into another meeting with a, with a company. It's like, hey, we want to do gene therapy for Syngap, but we need like a good, a healthy six-figure amount of money to, to support the program. And I was like, well, I should think about it. Because each of these gene therapies is different, right? Gene therapy is like saying car. I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of cars, different flavors, different technologies. But... I tell you, by the end of Wednesday, I was just bouncing off the walls. I'm like, that is a less three different, very credible players thinking about gene therapy, not including Regal Therapeutics, who's publicly working on a on a on a viral vector based approach for CRISPR A, and then um, other stuff that we've we've heard about. And then the end of Wednesday was great. We had we had some interns who wanted to work with us this summer, and and we had an introductory meeting with them. If anyone out there is an intern is willing to work for free and wants to learn about rare diseases and science, let us know. By the way, so that was um, Wednesday, and I was just like so excited. Monkeys gene therapy, amazing. Thursday rolls around, and we had a webinar scheduled with Dr. Terry Joe Bichelle. Dr. Bichelle is a mom of an Angelman kid named Lou, who's amazing. And Dr. Michelle, after working on Angelman for a long time, said, you know, I've learned a lot and I want to help other neurological um, rare diseases. Let's set up a group called Combined Brain. And when I met uh, Dr. Michelle a couple of years ago, I was like, this is amazing. I can't believe you're so generous with your time. Let, I'd love to be a part of it. And we joined and it has been very good to us. Um, through Combined Brain, we have, we have been a part of the ORCA process and now we use them as our biorepository. So I asked... Terry Joe to, to come and talk about the biorepository and about combined brain. Cause you guys always hear me talk about combined brain. I'm also excited about it. And, um, people are sometimes wondering what I'm talking about. So Dr. Michelle, and it was a great webinar I, and I'm going to come back to it at the end of this talk, but check out that webinar. Cause the first bit, I, and I encourage Terry, Terry Joe to do this. She really talked about her own journey and you hear that journey and a, you can't help but be inspired and B, you realize how lucky we are to work with her. But at the end of that talk, she talks about the biorepository and how important the biorepository is. And we're going to be asking you guys to give samples, blood samples to the biorepository. Make sure you do that. And then that was just Thursday morning. Thursday around lunch, we had a catch up with Tom Frazier. Dr. Frazier is at John Carroll University, um, former CSO of Autism Speaks, very smart guy. And he was giving us an update on a project we shared last year and has asked us for more support to do a, a, a build on that project. And that's really exciting. And I, and I, you know, there are about 10 SRF leaders and board members there. And we were all like, this is pretty exciting. This is very cool. So that was 
That was awesome. That was by, the end, by lunch on Thursday, I was like, wow, this is, things are happening. And then I had to drive up to UCSF where I met with a researcher. I'll actually share a link in, a whole, in the show notes. Her name's uh, Helen Wilsey. And Dr. Wilsey is working on frogs. And you probably haven't heard about frogs. We talk about mice a lot. We talk about rats. Now I'm talking about monkeys, but frogs is a new one. And um, I'm going to share the, her, her story in the show notes, but we, she has done a little work on Syngap in the past, and, and we are trying to um, get her to think more about doing more with frogs and Syngap. And that was awesome. Dr. Wilsey is, is really excited and really cares about her work uh, helping kids. I want to come back to Dr. Frazier for a second. Um, important point. Part of the work with Dr. Frazier, aside from funding him to build a, a, a validated scale, and I'm not going to talk about validated scales, but we need them. And he said, you know, part of this is I need you guys to, to, to find me at least 100 patients um, to take this test. So he's going to build an online tool and we're going to ask you probably end of this year, early next year to take this test and to help him validate it and make sure the results make sense. And, and he's like, do you, you guys think you can get 100 people to take? And I was like, absolutely. We're going to, no problem can we get 100 people. We have 350 people here in the U.S., and, and then we have people in England and Australia and Canada. Yes, we're going to get 100 people. He said, you know, not everybody can recruit 100 people. And I was like, we can recruit 100 people because our patients understand that when 100 people take this and help you validate it and write a paper, that validated scale will then become an option for clinical trials. And when we have an option for clinical trials, more people are going to be willing to work on Syngap because we've done this work, right? Because as families, we can share our samples, blood, we can share our data, medical records, citizen. We can share our time by doing these surveys. And we can share our treasure, our money, by funding research. And we do all of these things. Why do we do all these things? Because we want people to help our kids and we know that we have to do our part. So Tom Frazier was like, can you guys really get 100 people to take the survey at the end of this year? And we were like, we will deliver 100 people. And I'm talking to you families. Put that on your calendar, December, January. Take, take survey for Dr. Frazier. It's gonna be awesome. And by doing that all together, we're, we're laying the groundwork for a better future for Syngapian. So that was, that was awesome. Very exciting, very exciting Thursday. So Friday, I mean, Wednesday, G Therapy Monkeys. Friday, Thursday, Terry Joe Bichelle, Dr. Frazier, Dr. Wilsey, Frogs. Um, how could it get better? Friday rolls around. And um, what was the point of Friday? Friday, two really important things happened. Uh, you know, there was a meeting about some software for another study, and then the Missense families all got together. We talked about the Missense work because, you know, the Missenses and the VUS, that's a big thing. I've talked about it before. But then we talked to another university who called us, and um, they have a grant to do a study on clinical trial outcomes. And guess, guess how that conversation went? Hey, we need to interview 20 people, boys and girls, racial diversity, this spectrum of ages, all these demographics for these studies. And we're very good at this. Callie does a great job of this. We did this for the ORCA. We've done this for other studies. We said, just tell us what you want. We walked through, we had a meeting, we, we, we picked families who fit their measures and we sent them emails and we said, please, please reach out to them and do, do a one hour interview. So thank you to those families who've already reached out. Um, again, by working with these institutions and by doing so quickly and efficiently we we not only ensure that Syngap gets into the literature but these researchers talk to each other when they say hey I'm thinking about Syngap they can be like whoa Syngap those people recruit overnight it's amazing we that's the reputation we want we want people to know that we can get patients we can feed studies with data and here's the funny part so this this university is doing a really important study um they were like you know after we do this study, just like Frazier, after we do this initial work, we're going to want to validate it with like at least 100 people. Do you think you can get 100 people? We've never had a rare disease group get 100 people before. And I was like, and this one's really important, by the way. I, I'm not going to get into it, but it's important. And I was like, how about 200? Like we, we yes. Yeah. Take, a, take an online survey. Y yes. Yes. Same thing I said to Frazier. We, we will be asking you guys to take a couple of surveys in the future. And I don't say yes to everybody, but some people come to us and they're like, we want your patients to do whatever. And I'm like, that's not obviously like super valuable. And I don't want to ask my patients to do every single thing that people come to me for, because I realize that we all have a limited time. But when we guys, when we come to you guys and say, please do this thing for Frazier or please do this thing for this other place. Um, it matters. It matters. There's a, there's a through line 
from when, you know, bef the work that went on before we asked you to do the survey and the papers that will come after that survey and why those papers matter in terms of the impact they will have on clinical trials. So, you know, Frazier, this other place, clinical trial readiness, academics thinking about caring about Syngap1. How could it get better? Well, two more things. Thing number one, we released the uh, Syngap census, syngap.fund slash census, C-E-N-S-U-S. The census is where we update the world on how many patients we found. We found another 51 in the past quarter. So we now have 1,215, 1,215. Burn that number in your brain. That's how many Syngapians we know about here on earth. There's more than that who were diagnosed because as soon as we put out this number, in fact, it happened almost immediately. Someone from Slovenia was like, you only have five people in Slovenia. We actually have six people in Slovenia. Thank you, Simon. Okay, so we'll, we'll update that in the next count. But that just keeps happening, right? We keep publishing this number. We keep getting, getting more information, finding more people and upping the number. That's exciting. Thing number one. Thing number two, let me give you an update on the Sprint for Speaking Gap. Sprint for Sing Gap is April 29th. Today is April 21st, simple arithmetic, 28 days until Sprint for Syngap happens. Find a party near you. Let me tell you how the numbers are coming in. We've raised already, and this event isn't start for 28 days. We've raised $77,700. And here are the teams in order. Phoebe's Fight, still number one at 28 grand. Team Tavilla, hot on their heels, 26 grand. I told you they would come up. Team Rocco, right there at 10 grand. Hope for Hadley, coming out of, coming out of fifth into fourth at $4,400, MMA, 2,000, Team Grayson, 800, Team Kai, 800, Team Sadie, 700, Team Andrews, 700. It's going to be his birthday party in LA. I think a few of us are going to that. Allison, 700. And then we got another team. I got to go to the next page here. Team Nia, 600, Teddy, 5, Reef, almost 5, Team Patrick, 200 kilometers for Kai, 200, Singap M, I don't even know who this is. Too. Anyway, the, the teams keep coming. Team Lizzie. So look forward to Sprint for Singap in 28 days. We're going to raise some real money. And here's where I want to end. I want to end. I'm going to actually, for the first time ever, I'm going to try something new. I want to append another video to this video. And what this video is, is this is Dr. Michelle. So we had this wonderful webinar on Thursday I told you about. And Dr. Michelle was, was, was talking. And, you know, we were done. We were wrapping up. No more questions. Thank you very much, Terry Joe. And Terry Joe said, one more thing, one more thing. And I'm just going to stop here and I'm going to insert Dr. Bichelle's comments at the end of this podcast because I want you to hear them. It's, it's, about a, it's about a one minute clip, but it's important. And this is coming from somebody who's been doing rare disease for 30 years ish, leads an organization with over 50 rare diseases and is constantly going to meetings and talking to industry and researchers. Think about that as you listen to what Dr. Bichelle says, and then get to work and keep working on Syngap1 because it is having a tremendous impact. I got to say one more thing. Syngap is hot. And yeah. uh, I'm telling you, and part of the reason people ask me, why is there so much attention towards Syngap right now? And uh, because really, you know, you don't have, there are other disorders in combined brain that have similar incidents. There are other disorders in combined brain that have similar symptoms. Most of them have similar symptoms. So why is Syngap so hot? I'm gonna tell you why Syngap so hot because you guys have done a whole bunch of work to make it easy for people to do research on Syngap. I'm not kidding you. All the stuff that you put at Citizen, all the stuff, the natural history that you're collecting, the samples that you're collecting, the research that you've been funding, it's working. People are noticing. They talk to me and ask me about Syngap a lot. And by people, I mean researchers, industry members, clinicians. Syngap is hot. And it's because you all have made it hot. And it seems kind of weird to have to make a rare disease hot. But I'm telling you, the easier you make it for people to do research, the easier they'll, they will actually find a treatment for your kids. And you're doing it. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you I didn't write that. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Thanks so much, y'all. That, that was Bye. fun. And, uh, and I'll be seeing you around. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. All right. Bye. Bye.